Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening for some. Hello, welcome. We're so excited to have you in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're able to unmute yourself, we would love to hear you. Um, we're so excited to have you on today's call. It's CV optimization. So yeah, let's get it going. Um, we're going to give it a few more minutes before we start. And then, you know, but before then, please go ahead and let us know in the comment section how you feel about today, what you're hoping to get. Um, again, you can share the invites with your friends, people that you know will be willing to um, gain some knowledge from today's invitation or from today's session. So yeah, we're so excited. I'm going to be calling out names just so I'm saying hello to the right people. Hi, Gemma. I see you. Hi, Jetra. Thank you for putting on your video. Okay. She just put it off now. I'm not sure why, but thank you for coming in. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Katharina. Hi, Shakela. Hi. Hi, Victoria. Hello. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Anastasia. Thank you so much. We already have um, goodness in the building. She will be taking on today's session. So we're giving it one more minute. But before then, welcome, welcome, welcome. Anita, you're not saying anything. Why? Apologies. I did not want it to be rowdy, but I'm <laughs> seeing Yandisa. Hi. Ooh, hi, Yandisa. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just so fun to see people that I do interact with at the back yeah. end. We have Shakira, yeah. we have our Winters, Alejandra, um, Sarah, we have Larissa here, we have Laura. Thank you guys for coming in. Uh, and yeah, we're kicking off yeah, to yeah, absolutely. So, um, absolutely. I'm Thank you so much. So yeah, I, I am very well excited as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I'm going to kick it off with introducing our speaker today because we want to be sure that we're able to get as much juice from her as possible. So Goodness is a management consultant with seven years of work experience in tech industry. Um, she has worked with multinational tech companies like Microsoft and GPTW Africa. Now, um, the good thing about, you know, having goodness on today's call as the facilitator for today's program, and if you're possible, if it's possible for you to mute yourself, please go ahead, just so we have a good rundown on who our facilitator is. So like I was saying, goodness is the co-founder and COO at Mini Money, which is an exciting company. She's also the founder of Startup HR Africa, a company that helps tech startups in Africa find and manage talent. I mean, Wentz were so good at getting the best hands for our community members. Goodness is passionate about talent development and job readiness for Africa youth. Um, I'm so excited because she is a first class graduate of international relations mm -hmm. from the pre prestigious University of Nigeria, um, Nsuka, and a, a master's in human resource from Brunel Business School in London. Um, Goodness is an alumnus of Lagos Business School, Leadership and Management, and a fellow of the Peace Tech Accelerator, Washington, D.C. Hi, Goodness. Thank you so Hi. much for coming in today. Yeah. We're so Hi. excited that you were able to make out time, and we cannot wait to get enough from you today. So please take it on. We're so ready. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hi, Laura, Yandisa, Jethrude, Adria Bassi. Thank you, everyone, for having me, really. Um, I will tell someone that this is what I love to do as much as it is and always will be my uh, my first love. And I'm happy I'm getting back to it full time again. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to, to get on this session with everyone. I'm going to have to speak for maybe 30 minutes or 20, 25. And I want to take questions because... Again, it's one thing to tell you this and that and that and what should be in your CV and what shouldn't. But I'm happy to just take feedback and then we can look at some CVs practically. If ever, if anyone is bold enough to show us their CV, we can take a look at it 
and then look through your CV and say, okay, is this good? Can we can we improve on this? And that if there's anyone who wants us to take a look at the CV for this session, please send it to Anita or Dora so they can send it to me. Um, so while I'm speaking, I'm able to also just take a look at it and then make some comments. Um, if we see really good ones, I'm happy to use them as examples. If we see ones that we need to work on, we can then work on it together on the call and come out with a better CV for the person, right? So yes, one or two people, um, whoever first sends to Dora or Anita, um, I think we can take it from there. But thank you guys for having me. So good. Um, I just want to hear from a few people, maybe Laura, Yadita, just people I can see on my screen. Where are you dialing in from? Gemma, Katharina, where are you dialing in from? Barcelona. Oh, nice. How is Barcelona today? Warm and nice. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Yandista? Oh, Katharina, Germany, nice. I'm from South Africa. Sorry, I didn't hear you. South Africa, is Okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, so can we get a sense of just um, where we are in our career journeys? Like how many years of experience do you have? You can always type on the group, Central America, okay? You can always type on the group just so I get a sense of um, people that I'm speaking to. So how many years of experience do you have? If one, this is 1 1.5, is this like one year, five months? Oh, less than a year, okay. <laughs> or was that 15? Um, five years, okay, good. So, so a couple of us have recent CVs in the past, maybe got some jobs with those CVs as well. Um, some of us are also looking to maybe update CVs. Yeah, and these are two years experience, two years. Okay, good, good. So let's generally just talk about what CVs are and what they're not, right? Um, totally from Nigeria, a lot of you is, I am with myself. This is good, this is good um, because they're different kinds of CVs. So, okay, let's see that someone who is Giving. Right, so I'm just going to write that as one of the things that I'm going to point out. Okay. No, so now, a CV, again, we all know what this is. It's good day, no experience at all. Okay, that's fine. Um, a no experience CV. Okay, so we'll just touch on those very important um, points. So you see we from someone who's maybe moving careers and someone who has no experience. Okay. So your CV is a summary of your work experience, um, one year experience, not in tech. Okay. It's a summary of your work experience and your background um, relevant to the job that you're applying for. Now I say that because it is a thing. And I think the thing about this topic is I personally think it's overflowed everyone talk about this all the time but each time we get a cv uh, you still see people make the same mistakes over and over again i'm wondering what is the problem a cv is a summary of your background and your work experience relevant to the job that you're applying to now everyone must have a master cv what is a master cv right a master cv is a master cv is um it, it's almost like a, um, a complete documentation of all your experiences, right? So relevant or not relevant, whatever you've done in your life professionally, and sometimes even in your hobbies, make sure they're in a document, right? So from internships, the year, the place, some of your achievements, make sure that you have it documented in a master CV. It doesn't have to be. So from that master CV, you then create specific CVs for, for specific roles. Now, um, and if there's, if there's one thing you take away from this session is that CV writing is hard work, but it's worth the work, right? Because still today, we still need to check CVs before we hire people. It, it's just how it has to be done because um, it's one thing to meet people and say, oh, um, and they say, oh, I can do the job. But you always want to validate, like, okay, let me see what you've done in the past. Okay, let me see your CV. Let me see a document that represents that. Now, a CV doesn't have to look one way you know there is no for me when it comes to cv writing i don't focus on formatting i don't focus on what it should look like aesthetically i'm very particular on 
content, right? Yes, yeah, some some CVs look they they're really good to look at, but if you look at the content and they're not what you're looking for, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is, you're not going to pick the candidates, right? So while we take a look at what the structure should look like, I'm focusing on what the content should be. You can have a really good looking CV that doesn't convince me that you can do the job, but in person you you look convincing, right? So in Nigeria, there's something we call what you ordered versus what got delivered. So you see a really great CV, <laughs> really great and amazing CV. And when you see the candidates in person, they can't defend it. They don't look anything like what the CV is, you know, that you've gotten looks like. So, so what we're trying to do here is not make you look great on paper. I think people should be better in person, actually. If I look at your CV and you walk into my office, I want you to look better. I want you to be better convincing than the paper that I'm seeing. But I think where people get it wrong is they put out such a crappy document and they don't give themselves a fair chance, you know, at a job opportunity or give themselves a shot. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Make sure that you're giving yourself a fair chance to be seen, to be heard. Because sometimes you never get into those rooms if your CV doesn't make it past the the, the panel that's looking through the seats, right? So I'm going to just start with the first thing that I always say about CV writing. Make sure your CV is showing more than it's telling, right? And I'm going to explain that. Now, a lot of people who write on their CVs, oh, I'm a very diligent person. I'm a diligent HR manager, you know, looking to show my skills. I'm a very hardworking manager. Looking like I can't know that you're hardworking because you're telling me that you're hardworking, right? Let your CV show, not tell. You're telling me you're hardworking, but how can I prove that? But if your CV tells me something like, I'm a professional nurse with seven years of experience in managing, you know, kids, stuff like that. So let's go with, oh, I'm a bilingual pediatric nurse with 15 years of experience in intensive care for children. Now, when I go down your CV, I'm going to see your proficiency in English, your proficiency in French. I'm going to see the places you've worked, which will be tally up to 15 years. And so that's telling me, that's that's showing me. You're not just telling me. You can show it on your CV that you have this experience, you're bilingual. But your CV can never show me that you're diligent. Do you get what I mean? So don't put things on your CV that can your CV cannot prove. Do you see? So don't, don't put things in your CV. Please, let's mute. Um, so don't put things in your CV that your CV cannot authenticate, right? So words like, I'm hardworking, I'm a trustworthy. That's all that is. They're just filler words. You don't need it. Go straight to things that when I look at your CV, I'm able to check it, see that in there. Oh, I'm a chartered accountant with three years of experience in this. That if I look at your CV, I'm able to see that. I've worked across three most national companies and helped them do this and that. If I look at your CV, I can see that. But if you focus on telling me on your one page or two line profile that you know, you're hardworking, you're this, you're soft spoken, you're that, all of those. I'm just going to look away and look for something else. So I think from the very first start, make sure your CV is showing more than it's telling. Now, there's certain things that are basic that you must have in your CV. Till today, I'm currently hiring a, an operations manager for a company and someone with over six years experience sent me their CV and there's no contact number. There's really no contact number. And I'm confused genuinely, like, why? So I'm going to move on because I'm really not going to start looking for your contact number anyway, right? So we must look at, and it might have been an omission. So my thing is to be more um, detailed and careful when you're putting out your CV. There are things that must be there. Your full name must be there. Your email address must be there. Your, your phone number must be there. You must have a LinkedIn profile. At least if I don't have access to it. If you mistakenly didn't put your number, I can click on your LinkedIn profile. I might be able to send you a message, right? Um, your home address can be there. It doesn't have to be so dumb or lucky Lagos, Nigeria. It doesn't. You don't have to go through number this and that and that. We just need to know where you're located because sometimes jobs are specific to different environments or they're specific to locations, and we want to know that you're located in those um, places, right? So if I'm hiring for Lagos, I'm very specific to look out for people who are living in Lagos, especially if I don't have a budget for um, relocation, right? So 
So just to see, yes, so just the city and the country works perfectly, right? Um, but then if you're in Lagos, you know, or you're in cities where you know that there's a big distance from each other, and I'll give you an example. In Lagos, there's Lagos Island and Lagos Mainland. And I know that a couple of people like to hire, if, you're, if your office is on the mainland, you want to hire people who stay close because of the traffic situation, because of just the stress of people coming to work. So if you're on the mainland in Lagos, you want to add mainland Lagos, Nigeria. Do you understand? Just it's just easier. Um, and you don't have to, you know. So when someone picks your CV, they don't need a second contact, you know, with you to clarify this and that before they can make a decision to move forward with you. Um, your CV has to be really good for people to go out of their way to get additional information. So make sure that every time people get your CV, they really do not need an additional information to reach out to you, right? So you have the basics that they need that um, is covered in your CV. Um, now there's a, so different people, different styles, right? But I'll tell you as a recruiter what I look out for. The first thing, so if I have your contact details, your name is there, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at your profile. Now, if I look at that profile section of your CV that tells me what you do and who you are, Right, the next thing I'm just looking for are the things that verify those things, you know. If you don't have a profile section, that's fine. I just go straight to looking at your experience. But the profile section just helps me know who I'm speaking to, right? Um, if, it's, if I look at your profile and it just says, oh, a licensed nurse looking for a challenging environment, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who that person is, right? It doesn't tell me anything about you. But from if, if I'm looking at, you know, um, I'm a human resource manager with 10 years of experience uh, working across employee relations, payroll management. It's, I can have a plan in my head. I already know the kind of person I'm looking out for, right? So it's always, it's always easy to, if I'm hiring for this role or if I'm looking to hire somebody in this role, what would I be looking for? It's almost like put yourself in a situation where if I'm hiring a staff, if I want to <laughs> hire somebody, if I want to bring in somebody to my team going through your work experience to look at okay what are you what have you done now it's important to note that and i still see people do this which is why i'm pointing it out um listing the places that you've worked is great gives you if you worked in really good places i think it's important to point them out because um, a lot of those places you need some level of um to get into if you worked at you know big companies if you have, if you work with companies that are relatively not known, right? Um, you need to be more specific about the work you did there. And I'll tell you what. So if, if I'm writing my CV, I write Microsoft Nigeria Human Resource Manager, right? Because the Microsoft itself has a name, so it, it has some level of pedigree. If I'm speaking about a company who maybe not so known, but of course doing some good work, I'll put out first the role that I did there. So I'm gonna go. HR manager, name of company. Um, again, these are just small details that matter. It's not gonna make you lose the opportunity, but I think it matters, right? It just helps with um, people looking at your CV one time and the right things are jumping at them, right? So if I'm looking for a human resource manager who, um, um, if I'm looking for a human resource manager who, who maybe has worked as, um, a learning and development expert or something. And I see that as the first rule that you've occupied, that I'm happy to just jump and have a conversation with you. Um, so make sure that it's clear what you did in those rules. So when you're pointing out your, when you're writing under your, your job description, so you have the name of the company you've worked, the role you did, and under it, you're about to list out the things that you've done. Now, I see a lot of people, there's a lot of information that has gone around. They all put numbers, put percentage, put all of this. You didn't see everybody writing, I saved the company $100,000. I brought in 10, 25% of the deals. You can write all that on paper. And that might get you a calling, right? But I think the most important thing is to actually put in what you did. Like, I feel like people should be very, people should be very sincere in their CVs. You know, blow your own horn, but be sincere in your CV. If you were part of the team that did something, 
right? For instance, you planned an event and in the event planning team, you were the one who sent out emails and ensure that all the speakers had a good time and you know they were taken care of. Highlight what you did. Now, it makes no sense to go on and say, I program manage the whole event. And then if you're hired as a program manager, you're not able to deliver, right? So when you're highlighting your achievements in a role, highlight the things that you owned end to end so that if you're brought in in another capacity to do and replicate the exact same thing, you're able to do it without stress, right? So. So, you know, blow your horn on the things that you did in your team, you know. Um, don't go talking about what other people did and forget about the part that you played. So go on and talk about the things that you did and how that affected the result of the team or the result of the process, right? In the most simple way possible. In the most simple way possible. Um, I, as a human resource assistant at ABC Nigeria Limited, I did all the employee screening process. I managed the employee screening process and, and calling um, candidates, ensuring that you know they showed up on time for interviews and ensuring that they got their offer letters on time. That's simple and short, and that is an achievement, right? Um, so if I'm looking for a human resource person who can manage a recruitment process, I know that this person is able to manage that. So sometimes, you know, the difference with a good CV and a bad CV is just loosely used words, words that are not intentional, words that are not um, particular to, to the conversation. When, when I say conversation, to so the job description that you're applying for. So you're applying for a job that has, that has told you what they're looking for clearly, right? Or we're looking for a human resources manager who would take control of... Um, a group of companies and manage um, employee processes end to end. If you have that experience, you should know the things to highlight on your CV. You're highlighting things around people management. You're highlighting things around strategy. You're highlighting, you're highlighting things around um, leadership. You're highlighting things around um, training and development. Because you know that these are skills required of a manager. But if you look, if if the rule says an analyst rule, you're highlighting things around your use of data. You're highlighting things around um, how hands-on experience you are with um with employee relations management. You're highlighting things around documentation and um, being able to um relate to people on a day-to-day -day. Mm -hmm. these two rules require two different skill sets so it's important to make sure that you understand what the rule is now <laughs> i see a lot of people just get off once they see hr manager they started applying data analyst they started applying hr managers in unilever do not do the same things as hr managers in microsoft they do not do the same things as hr managers in the back they do not do the same things as hr so you need to read the job description first and be sure that that job is a fit for you now I understand that we're all looking for jobs we want to be doing something yes but it's important to be doing the right job you don't want to be frustrated in the job that you're not designed for right so um a lot of us are just going to pick up any job that comes on and apply. And I think that's the first mistake we make. Make sure that a job description calls out to you, like the job descriptions you see, and you just know that I can do this. This is for me, right? Now, it's a different conversation when you go into the company and maybe it's not what you eventually imagined or it's not what they wrote on paper because some organizations are better on paper than they are in person, right? And you can never blame yourself for not knowing that. But the most important thing you can do is to ensure that you're going into the right place, at least from what you can see. So there's no need to look at a job description, see that you're not a fit for it. Because you want the job, you go on and take it. And then when the pressure comes, you're feeling overwhelmed. Now, there are times that you find job descriptions that, you know, you look at your CV, you look at the job description. You think I can do it, but my CV doesn't say so. That's a different conversation. Then maybe sit with somebody who can help you to, you know, outline, okay, some of the things you need to portray to show that you can do this job. Like I said, if you look at the job description, there, there are words that, you know, they've used on that job description that people say, um, oh, like I'm looking for someone who can organize. You must portray words like that on your CV as well. 
I've organized an event like this before. I've organized people in this social gathering. I've organized because they're looking for an organizer. There is no point of seeing a job description where they've said they're looking for an organizer and you never use the word organize ever in all of your CV. It technically doesn't make sense, right? Um, so I think it's just, it's the little things that matter. I think we, we all here know what our CVs should look like, but I feel like sometimes we miss out on the most important things and that makes and that makes um, our applications fall short. Now, there are things called applicant tracking systems, and, and this thing is used by big companies generally. I, I can tell you that for free. They're applying to the likes of Coca-Cola, Microsoft, the big companies. They use a lot of applicant tracking system. But if you're applying to mid-level small companies, human beings actually look at your CV, right? It's not every time that a computer looks at your CV. Sometimes it's real people. I look at people's CVs on a daily basis. Um, and so it's still going to be very subjective to what people think and how they feel, right? Computers can be can be non-subjective, but human beings can be. So, um, and that's why we say for some of the roles that you're applying, make sure that they're, they're, they're filler words, they're words, not filler words. You're, you're using the words in the job description so that when those computers are going through, you know, you they can pick your CV as, okay, this one has this and this has that. But when human beings are looking at your CV, it's really very subjective. They're looking at what they've put out. They're looking at what's in front of them. Does it match? Does it look good? So it doesn't matter if you use the filler words or not or the right words. You know, your experiences, the skills and things that you put down, they must match what they're looking for. Um, now, I think another thing that I wanted to point out was you must reference relevant experiences to those roles. Now, it doesn't have to be the exact. So because I'm looking for, you see, a HR manager position, and because you've never been a HR manager, you're not going to apply, no. So if you've been a HR executive and moved on to a HR analyst, you've moved on to a people manager, it's safe to tell the person that the next role that I'm looking forward to is a HR manager. So even if I haven't done it, my years in these roles, one, two, three, have prepared me for that role, right? So sometimes your CV might not be exactly what they're looking for, but it's, you're on a trajectory to what they're looking for. Do you get what I mean? So you must show relevant skill sets to show them that I'm able to take on this next step, even if I haven't done it before. Because I've had people who haven't worked the exact same job capacity. They've not had the exact same job titles, but you can see that the experiences are leading up to what you want, right? Um, and so you take them on and uh, in the interview process, things become clearer, right? So the CV is just the first layer. So and that's what we're trying to get you to cross. Once you're able to cross that layer, interview process is a different ball game and it's a different class, it's a different conversation, right? A lot of people get their CVs right, get their interviews absolutely wrong. So that's another that's another conversation. For today, we're just ensuring that your CV is optimized for job search. And we've mentioned a few things that if you apply, trust me, I think um your next application will go through if if you do, you know apply these little things. Make sure that you have your details correct. Make sure that your application is relevant to the role. Make sure that you're highlighting your achievements, not just your job description. Make sure you're also not repeating verbatim the job description that was written. A lot of people go on and repeat the job descriptions on their CVs. Nobody's stupid. They'll find out, right? So just put in the things that you have done, but make sure they're tailored to the particular job that you're looking for. Um, I think I have a, a judge sample here. Let me just plug in. All right, um, so for those, yes, I, I'm gonna get to that in like three to four, five minutes. Um, so I think the basics I've covered, which is ensure that 
your CV is, if you look at your CV, does it tell your story? Does it tell your career story? Well, of course, not everything. But does it tell um, a story compelling enough for someone to call you back for a specific role, right? Um, very important. Like I said, some CVs are being looked at by human beings. If they don't look good to look at, it won't go through. Uh, if the content is good, great. But I think appearance should also look good. I think I sent, yeah, I think, uh, Anissa, you can share the example of the bad CV that I shared with you now. And then the example of a good CV that I shared with you. So I'm going to also share this. Oh, I thank you. When do you be sharing it now? Yes, feel free to share what I what I sent to you. Yes. So this is this is a CV sample that tells you absolutely nothing about this person. <laughs> absolutely nothing. And we see this kind of CVs every day, every day, right? Um, and and this is why I said. IT support in one company might be totally different from IT support in another company. So you want to tell me which did as an IT support in your company so that I'm able to look at it and say, does this work for us? Is this the same kind of skill sets we're looking for? Otherwise, um, um, yeah, this CV would definitely not pass through for anything. So can you share the, the, the other one? Um, Yes, when do we share it now? Yeah. Let me look at the comments. I think some people are making comments. Yeah, we do have two questions so far. And it gives you some switch industries, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um so for, for some countries, so if you look at, yes. So if you look at the CV marked good, I mean, if you as a person, which CV would you take? Let, let's let's take a look at this, right? What CV would you take? Obviously the, the second one, because it's clear, it's simple, it's easy to look at. The key information jumps, jumps right at you. Um, and you can already see what's, what is required of you um, in each in each candidate you can already tell mm, is this someone I want to speak to um, is this someone I do not want to speak to yes um, remote position okay great so again if I can if I can be added to the community maybe just for today and tomorrow I'm able to um, share with some materials with them um, and then I can, I can leave tomorrow or I can share them with you and you share with them just in case you have any more questions um, because I do have a one o'clock just in case we're not done with all the questions before I leave I'm able to answer them afterwards right yes so let me start with with um, let me start with this question on switching industries in my case, healthcare to tech. Do I mostly focus on self transferable skills? How should I structure my CV when the majority of work experience is in another industry? How much of the work perception should I include? Okay. If you always advise, if you it depends, right? So I can be switching from healthcare to tech, but in the same role. So I'll give you an instance. Except you're saying, so do you want to tell me the rules particularly so that we can tell our answers more? Because I've worked in I've worked in tech, core tech, I've worked in education, but it's been HR the whole time. So I didn't really need to change much because the skill sets are entirely very similar. So be beyond switching industries, if you're switching roles, then that's different, right? So if you're switching roles from healthcare, are you switching just industries or you're switching roles particularly? So let's 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 use an instance like you used to be a health officer, now you're a data analyst, right? So that's switching rules. So even if you're applying to um data analysts in the same tech industry, there's some things you also have to highlight anyways, right? So if you're switching industries but staying in the same role, I don't think there's so much you have to do differently besides um obviously showing that you have the skill sets 
and you have a knowledge of the industry in a way, maybe. Um, maybe have you volunteered in that industry before? Have you, uh, are you a part of the community switching rules from NOS to web developer? Okay, good, yes. Yeah, so um, I thought as much. So if you're switching um, rules, then that's a little more technical, right? Um, your CV would obviously state that you've been in the working environment for a bit. So obviously you must write that you've been in NOS for this number of years, now switching to data scientists. And I'll tell you why that's important, right? No work experience is wasted. No work experience is, is a is a waste, um, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, because even as a nurse, the people that um, the the that skill is so important in care. For instance, for having nurses applying to move to HR, I would actually love that. I love that because they they have skill sets in in caring for people, um, understanding um, how how employee relations will work because they've taken care of people before, right? So it's not an excuse set that you wanna just alienate and just start talking to yourself and talking about yourself as a data analyst purely. For instance, you have your switching data analyst and you're now saying, oh, I'm a data scientist. Uh, I'm a one year data scientist, um, great at using data to do this. I mean, that's good, but you can as well say, I'm a certified nurse, 12 years, who's now transitioning to data scientists, looking to apply data, uh, digital data to help organizations make, um, make, you know, creating insights with numbers and stuff like that. You know, basically showing that transition. Now growth is important to organizations. And most times when they see that you have that, it's actually something good. So there is no point of, you know, totally removing all the years of experience you've had as a nurse and just coming in fresh, um, um, just coming in fresh as, as a data analyst, right? So I would say, make sure that you're highlighting that. And then in your skill sets, right? Uh, you're, you're highlighting the skill sets that you've picked up as a data analyst and some of the skill sets that you also have as a nurse. I think they both come in um, handy very well. So as a nurse, you you walk through um what you've gone through you've walked through um, patient data you've gone through patient data you've been able to um, analyze people who are not feeling well and make and use the information that you have from their their profile right to to care for them now that skill is so important and I'll tell you where is most important though if you go past the CV stage and you go into interviews you must make sure that you're able to sell. Um, those two skill sets as very key. But yeah, in highlighting them, I don't think you should eliminate one completely. I think you should find relevant soft skills and even hard skills that you had as a nurse and then complement them with the new skills that you're picking up as a data scientist. So, Yeah, so, so, so focus on soft skills, but also look hard at some things that you did as a nurse and find their, their complementary skills, core skills, hard skills that you can translate into data science. If you don't know them, um, we can talk about it and we'll help you find it. But I'm very sure that there are core skills that you can transfer, um, that you can note from nursing to data scientists, I promise you, there are skills there. Yes, yeah, so I already answered this, how much of your past work experience should you include? Include the parts of your work experience that, um, that is relevant to the new stuff that you're doing. I think I already gave an example, um, using patient data, you can use that as part of, you know, how you can also translate to using data to make the right decisions for your company. I've been releasing myself on recruitment platforms based in Europe. Um, I've been using myself as my personal business in Europe. What would you advise is the best way to tell one CV to cater to different countries in Europe? Yes, yeah, so if you do type in Google and you check um, CV samples for Europe, a lot of it come out. I see one of the core differences with that is some of them encourage you to put your pictures. And I don't mind pictures, even in 
definitely at least I'm able to put a face to the name. So I really do not mind. Uh, I still ask you to take out on pictures and just focus on you know achievements. I see that is good. Um, I think you need to, like I said, check out some of the samples of CVs in Europe. I know American CVs are very short, very quick to um, speak to numbers, achievements, and what you've done. They don't encourage to put a lot of just go straight to and just go straight to work experience, education sets, um, and trainings. They're very big trainings that you've done. Uh, I all CVs look similar. I think the difference is the content and how you you know structure those words to show that you're you're skilled for that particular role. The core the core information that every CV should have is the same. It should have your contact details. It should have your experience. It should have maybe where you worked, how long you worked there. So some people are very keen on how long you worked in the place. So make sure there's the date, the year, and the month, the date, the month, and the year from beginning to the end where your last day was. Uh, and then the things you achieved on that role. Every CV should have this. It depends now is how you're able to tweak what there in the flex you know, what before at the end of the day, that's what CV is. It, it should match up to King form. Simple and not, and have the basic information. That's it. So whether you're in Europe, in Africa, you're in Nigeria, the only difference would be structure. So sometimes they want you to put your, your education first or your, your what's it called? Or, or your um, experience first. So just check what they want and what they like and just tailor it that way. And I think that just works. Can we find examples of CV in Europe and how to apply for it? Yes, I can share with you after this session. Um, so I can um, ping me later and I'm happy to share. Sure. Switching um, to cloud, say DevOps, can you advise? I have an administration background, switching to cloud, SA. Um, system administration, yeah, DevOps, yeah. Um, again, system, okay, thank you. So again, it's similar to what I've said before, right? There are different skill sets that are needed, but you know, very, um, very similar um, strategy to go about it. So you're moving to to DevOps now. Obviously, if you've done some projects, obviously, I know that when people start to train. When people start to train on a new role, it's good to highlight again that you're. It's good to highlight that you're new in something, but you're making progress, right? So even if you're new in DevOps, what have you been able to learn in DevOps? What have you been able to do in DevOps? What have you been able to pick up? And what can you what can you use DevOps to do for an organization? I think that's the most important key that we miss in our series. In all of the things that we write. How do we relate it to what the company is looking for and how we can help them achieve that, right? I think that's one of the things. So if, even if I write all the, I'm a HR person, da, 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 da. how can those skill set translate to making progress with the company? So no matter what I write in my profile, I would always put, you know, I can help you, you know, ensure that your people are happy, you know, you have the great work culture and this, that, that it must translate to something for them. So even as a DevOps person coming in newly, even with your one, two skill sets, what can you help the, the company achieve with those two skill sets, right? Even if it's working as a team, even if it's working with a DevOps manager, what are you able to bring to the table? If you're able to itemize those in your CV, I think that works. Hmm. So, yes, so if it's a brand that is known, which is why I said, if you're working on, for instance, if you're working in Nigeria, obviously you know all the popular brands. I think you should put it there if it's a popular brand. If not, I think you can also put it. You, you, we underestimate how companies do research. So sometimes um, I'll try to look up the names of the people that you quoted and see if it's something that you know, is close to our industry or is particular to us or something that would be beneficial to us. So I, so yeah, you can quote the, the the name of the brand that you worked on and people can take this the, the leap of 
you know, extra work to go and check out if it works. If it doesn't, that's fine. It also just shows that, you know, you're proud of what you did and um, you're not just saying, oh, I did this for X, Y, Z. Hi, goodness. Are you still there? Um, Sims, when we have lost her. Yeah, I think we have lost her. Yeah. Um, we're just going to give a, a few minutes or a few seconds for her to step right in. But thank you so much for the questions. Um, I think we're learning a lot. So far, I know now that I should make sure that my CV is showing and not telling. Um, I think for a lot of us, we're very good at putting, oh, I'm very hardworking or, you know, I am, I have strong work ethic. And now that she's better able to explain that to me, I know for sure um, that it doesn't translate to anything that can be seen, but more about, you know, you know, just uh, what I think I should say to you. So um, that's great. If you are here and you probably have ideas on or based on based off on what she has said, what do you think are some things that you were doing um, that you were doing wrong, you know, and what do you think you should be doing better right now? We're hoping that, you know, um, goodness is able to step right back in so that we can review one or two CVs yes. because we're, we're 10 minutes. Hi, hi, goodness. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm okay, back now. fantastic. Yeah. Great. All right. So we were just talking about one of the points that you made, which was um, to make sure that our CVs are, uh, are showing, not telling. Um, but yeah, please go ahead. Uh, maybe we can review one CV before we yes. end the session today. Go ahead, please. Yes. Yes. Um, I think I was taking the last question before I got logged off. Um, Your I video is switched off. Okay, oh, we can see that. you. No, I, so I see that I was taking the last question. Um, now I don't even have access to the chat anymore. I can read that for I hope you. I was able to answer that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah, you want me to read that, that or happened. we can go ahead and review a CV? Hi, goodness. Um, seems we lost you again. Okay. <laughs> Can we do this? Yeah, goodness, okay. can you hear us? I can, I can. Okay, great. So maybe we can go ahead and review one CV. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes. I'm on I'm on Catherine's CV right now. So I'm just going okay. to do a quick um, review of CV. Okay. Um, I hope you're not frozen because you, okay, all right. Um, goodness, are you still there? Yeah. yeah so I'm just having a call coming um, from my next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so we're sharing her CV just in case. Um, oh, wow. Hey, goodness. Yes. Okay. Are we reviewing this one on the screen? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, so so Katharina, um, with this, so I'm looking at, so um, I think I'm, uh, what's her name, also sent me another CV that I did open here. So I'm just going to try and find. Um, Uh, 
Okay. So I wanted to share, I wanted to also share um, My goodness. I'm here. One okay. second. All right. I'm sending something to. Okay. So I'm going to look at Katharina's um, bio or profile right now. So everything else works for me, right? Um, yes. Is this all the CV? Is this everything? Yes, uh, because I haven't updated it for my new job yet. Uh, because, <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, my new my first job is missing. So this was the one I sent to yeah, where I got my job basically. Yeah. Okay. This is what you, what you send for your job now. What is your job title? Uh, data specialist. I'm a data specialist now. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, so I was gonna speak to um, as to why you, yeah, so now it makes sense. So again, it's important to know what role you're applying for. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have an email, I have a phone number, I have a LinkedIn page, I like that. And I, there's a G, the GitHub account, which is fantastic and I love it, right? Python uh, language is great. So I think first, first look at it on the left-hand side, I have all the details that I need. Now coming to her education, I think this is good. For someone who doesn't have a lot of experience, mm. I think you know, your education should come mm. first, and which is what we've always told students and people who are applying for jobs newly, right? Yeah. Um, if, you, if you don't have a lot of experience to show, let your education, which you know, hopefully that qualifies you, do the talking for you. So if you've done courses that are relevant to data science, you've done a master's in data science, which is really good. Um, I think it's it's important that you put it there. I, I would, um, you know, just speak a bit to your, it keeps going off on my screen. I'm not sure why. So her profile, right? Mm. Um, again, I tell people that one of the things that gets you jobs is not really all, all the things you've done right or didn't do right. When you compare a candidate to the other, um you know one might just stand out for different reasons um and has might just have been that she has a master's in in applied mathematics right and um, the other person didn't have that or she's been a, a student association member she's involved in some extracurricular activities or or she's had you know some experience in agile scrum um and that was just what stood out for them <clears throat> Now I'm gonna read her profile. With my mathematical background, I have a strong analytical foundation. Now, if I'm looking for an analyst, I think this helps. This is very clear. I've done mathematics. So you see how you know, her math background is now an advantage you know, for data science, right? It's not um, a disadvantage because she didn't do data science initially. And I like how she used that background as a strength, not as a weakness, right? Um, exploring machine learning and data science in my master's, she's in my focus. So she talks about um, qualification. She talks about interests, right? Um, and what she wants to do going forward. And I think that this is good. I mean, I would probably phrase it differently, but I think that this covers the three um, things you want to see in a profile. So your qualification, which is not a lot, but you use the background in math and your foundation um, and you're now interested in data analytics to build a strong foundation for yourself. So I think that was good, that was smart. Um, and then just showing that, you know, showing how you've shifted your focus to where you are now, I think that's really good. So, so you can clearly tell what this person is looking forward to and what they're looking for, right? And I think for me, this works. So this is good um, because again, like I said, the education came first because we didn't have a lot of experience. So that's good. And I know that um, in Europe as well, they're not very keen with a lot of pointers under your work experience. So one, two pointers, three maximum. 
is great. It does the job. So yeah, for a beginner CV, I think this works. Any other one? So I have one, a Catherine, yeah, another Catherine CV. Um, and so if you can show that one, the Nigeria one, I think you can. Sure, when you well. it now. Yeah. So thank you, Katharina, for sharing us your CV. Um, I'm thank sure you. that when you start to apply for another role now, this profile is definitely going to change, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I, I like this a lot. A lot. Catherine, um, so, I like this a lot. I like the focus on specialization in numerical mathematics and optimization, you know, uh, minor in, yeah. This was a very intentionally written CV and I like it. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah. Are we having the Catherine CV now? Yes, it's coming up right now. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, I can okay. see the screen now. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, please. Okay, great. So, Catherine, what, what role would you say that you want to use the CV to apply for? Uh, I was using it to apply for a customer service role. Hmm. I can't scroll up, I'm not sure. Okay, 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 good. Yeah, just look at it. Customer service, right? Yes. Have you done any, okay, I see what you've done in customer service before. So yes, yeah, so I think your 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 career your career objective first of all is not personal statements and career objective doesn't do the job. I think just leave it as a profile, and then all of this. Yeah, I'm lost in the in the in the personal statements and career objective. I'm totally. Um, I don't think it tells your your story well. Um, I think it can be done better. And um, yeah, and I can work with you to change this. But if you look at this, this is what I was talking about. I am an organized, confident, result oriented. I'm not able to prove any of that from your CV, right? Yes, I have a previous customer experience. Um, experience. Yes, I can prove that from your CV, right? Um, boosting sales and customer retention. Your CV can tell me a bit about that. But I enjoy helping customers solve any existing problems they may have over the phone, face to face, or via email. I like that. That's a customer service. Um, that's a customer service skill to project, right? I'm skilled at using customer feedback to improve customer service process. That's really good. So you've left the better part of what you're saying in the last three lines, and you've used the first four lines, you know, to not sell yourself so much. Get what I mean? Okay. So yeah, so this profile could have ended in four lines and it, could have, it would have sold the message faster, right? And I think your education should have come right after, um, right after your experience. I also think that, um, 
yeah, the key career achievements are good. In your this is also very vague. Like, I'm not moved by percentages. I'm not personally as a recruiter. If I see improved feedback by 45% through excellent customer service, it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. For some people, they like it. I'm not particular because these numbers are very subjective. It's just you telling me. I can't prove it, right? Um, but in the work experience bit, um, I can see a bit of the work that you did. So develop and executive communications initiatives across the day. So in your interviews, I'm going to focus more on you then telling me, okay, how did you do this? And what, what did you develop? You know, how did you measure these numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So for me, um, this CV, again, you'll be lucky or unlucky if a better CV comes through the door. It will definitely knock this one out. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you have worse CVs come through, I'm going to say, okay, I can take a look at this one. I can take a look at this person and like, okay, let's see. Maybe she has. Hi. Okay. Okay. So, um, yes. So, guys, I think for me, yeah, this could have been done better. And I think I have already given that feedback. So I, we can work again together on this to make your um, profile better um, for your next job, obviously tailoring it to the particular job that you're hiring for. Okay. But yes. All right. If I'm... Yeah. Yeah. guys i might have to run. thank you um, so much goodness thank yes. you so much um, um John, again um uh anita if you could help us to share goodness's linkedin um address so we could you know move all out and go hit her up on linkedin but could everyone just say thank you to goodness. Thank you so much, goodness. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share my email address here. But I think LinkedIn, I'm going to share it anyway. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, we do have one more information for the entire team before we close out on today's session. But again, I'm, we're just going to wait for goodness to post that in. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, goodness, we have a lot of Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So feel free to, this is me on Instagram as well. On yes, yeah, so I'm better on social media that are platforms that are not WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my Instagram handle. All right. Just connect with her as well. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. I've got Thank you. I enjoyed every time spent with Thank you guys. You. Enjoy the rest of and your day. And you too. Bye. Bye. All right. So, um, yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, I'm excited that I was here. I didn't miss out on anything at all. I now know that I need to go back to my CV and do a lot of tweaking. Um, so thanks to goodness for that information. Um, however, uh, we have an opportunity that we're sharing with our community members. We have been doing a lot of partnerships. Um, one of those partnerships was able to get us um, an opportunity with Flatmax. Now, for some of the women here, you may know Flatmax. Um, they were able to provide to us um, an opportunity last year for an internship position for about 20 to 25 Wentees from our, our community. This year, they're going to be providing the same opportunity. I'm going to share my screen so we're able to go ahead and register for those who are interested. Now, it's an apprenticeship program as well as an internship program. We do have the goal of making sure that women within Wentas um, are able to get the right kind of information and be placed at the right positions you know, in the tech industry. So I will share my screen because I would love for us to be aware about this. Um, the information would actually go via our newsletter. So if you have never been receiving
any information for our newsletters. Now, um, for you to get access to that information, you need to go to our Wentas page and then make sure that you are um, registered as a member. So under the members portal, so you first off go to programs. From programs, you go to the members portal. You click to register. And then, um, you know, impute your information. If you could mute, that would be great. Thank you so much. All right, impute your information. You log in, and once you're in the portal, you should be able to see the Wentas and Flatmax Cohort 2 Apprenticeship and Internship Opportunity. Um, we're gonna be, we, we're not gonna share the link, but what we can do is share the link to where you can register. So which is the Wentas page right so the Wentas website again you know from the Wentas website to the programs page and then you go to register as a member now under the upcoming events you will see this which is the Wentas and Flatmax cohort 2 and this is where you're able to register for this fantastic opportunity. You can register um, under the apprenticeship program which would be for about six weeks or you can go ahead and register um, for the internship opportunity, which will be for about eight weeks. Now you need to also know that registrations has begun. We have a lot of time left for you to register. We wanted to open this up as soon as possible, right? So the apprenticeship begins on 1st of May and will end on the 9th of June while the internship program will begin on the 26th of June and end on the 18th of August. So we have more than enough time. Go ahead and register while it's still open. We want to see those information come in. Please indicate that you're also registering um, or you were referred from Wentas. This helps us to know, um, you know where these applications are, are coming in from. Um, we didn't want to let this out you know, to just anyone, but we wanted to make sure that it goes to the right people, which is obviously our community members. So go ahead and register. It's an internship opportunity. It's also um, an apprenticeship opportunity. So it's under the We Work and the We Learn track. Um, and then it's open again, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. We wanna be sure that you get the right kind of um, resources, the right kind of materials, the right kind of training as a woman in technology technology. So if you do have any questions, now is a good time. I'm, I'm seeing one question which says, um, can one register? Yes, you can absolutely do that. Go ahead and register, whether you're interested in the apprenticeship or the internship. It's free. It's, uh, you know, again, we're just going to, what we can do, someone is asking, share the link again, please. Absolutely. Um, we will share the link. So what we will do is share you the link to the website, which I'm, I'm going to do it that right now. So I'm just going to sign out from here. And then I can share the link with you. Again, please remember, you know, the time, um, the timeline for both so that you can register almost immediately. And if you know someone who you think should be interested or, uh, or would need this sort of opportunity, please go ahead and let them know so they can go ahead and register. All right. Um, I believe that really covers it for us today. Um, let me just share this link with everyone. Okay, please let me know if you can see that. Um, we're happy to have you register. Is this a new website for Wentas? I registered to Wentas website before, but it's asking me to register again. Um, no, this is not a new website. It should receive um, the the your email address and um the password but if you have it's if it's requesting for that try to you know um click on the forget your password um option and let's see how that works if you're not able to scale through you can reach me using dora ifon at yeah at wentos.com i'm sorry or anita okonweze at wentos.com or you can reach us using mail at wentos.com. So we're always happy to help you out with that. And um, I hope we were able to get more than enough from today's session. Okay, does anybody have any one last question before we step out for today? Any more questions? Anita Okonwezi. This is really 
um, enlightening session for me. And, you know, absolutely. like I always say, before we leave, I would love to see everybody's beautiful face so we can take a picture. Yandisa is already smiling. So everybody, <laughs> you can just indulge me for a minute and turn on your cameras so that we can all see. I, everybody's camera ready. Like it's just, it's coming on. It's coming on. Like, well, we've asked this so for so for so long that everybody's now just, oh yeah, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank so, you so much. And you'll be taking <laughs> pictures. I'll be taking pictures as well. And I'll tag you all on LinkedIn. Please repost and see yourselves smiling. Oh, we're so beautiful. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank in. you. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the other sessions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. Do have a lovely weekend. Um, be notified that we're going to be having a networking session. So this is going to be another big one for everyone. So we're getting ready for that. And the facilitator is someone who is really brilliant she's a brilliant young woman and we can't wait to have you guys you know on that session but yeah do have a fantastic weekend until next time thank you so much andrea thank you thank you thank you silva thank, <laughs> thank you, you yandisa gloria laura faith and young ade ade no isola larisa morin bye bye have a great I one bye bye thank you